Continuing on with Maxwell relations, we're going to summarize all the Maxwell relations for our various thermodynamic energy functions. So the functions that we have, we have U, internal energy, H, the enthalpy, defined as internal energy plus pressure times volume. We have A, the Helmholtz free energy, defined as U minus temperature times entropy. And we have the Gibbs free energy, G, defined as U minus TS plus PV, which is also equal to A plus PV, and also equal to H minus TS. So the differentials of these various thermodynamic state functions come from the following. So we have DU, the change in internal energy, is equal to the heat during a reversible process, TDS, minus or plus the work that occurs when the volume changes, minus PdV. For enthalpy, it's TDS plus VdP, changing with the pressure volume conjugate variables. dA, change in the Helmholtz energy, is minus SdT minus PdV, a conjugate of temperature and entropy there relative to internal energy, but pressure and volume differential being the same. And the Gibbs energy is a transformation of both those variables, so dg is equal to minus sdt plus vdp. All right, from these differentials, we see that each of these energy functions has their own natural variables, u being a function of s and v, h being a function of s and p, a being a function of t and v, and g being a function of t and p. All right, so we showed in the previous video how we derive the Maxwell relation for internal energy. We got that the partial derivative of temperature with respect to volume at constant entropy is equal to the negative partial derivative of pressure with respect to entropy at constant volume. So in a similar manner that we derived that in the previous video for internal energy, we can derive similar relationships for enthalpy, Helmholtz energy, and Gibbs energy. For our enthalpy, we get dt dp at constant entropy equals dv ds at constant pressure. For our Helmholtz energy, we get ds dv at constant t is equal to dp dt at constant v. And finally, for the Gibbs energy, we get ds dp at constant t equals minus dv dt at constant p. So at this point, you may be wondering, well, that's all a very neat mathematical trick, but what are the practical consequences of these kinds of ideas? So often what will happen is you'll have a derivative that shows up in a derivation, and it might be a derivative that you don't know how to compute. So it might be something complicated, but maybe there's a Maxwell relationship that has that same derivative, and that derivative is equal to something that is far less complicated, something that we might know, or if we have a simple kind of system, we might know it exactly. So for example, uh, ds dv, we might not know how the entropy changes with respect to volume for a system, but we might, we might know how the pressure changes with temperature. So for an ideal gas, for example, the pressure is nRT over V, and the derivative of that with respect to temperature is nR over V. So there we can get our, we can get our uh, volume dependence of entropy from our temperature dependence of pressure. Similarly, for the pressure dependence of entropy of an ideal gas, the volume of that ideal gas is going to be nRT over P. That derivative with respect to temperature is nR over P. So minus nR over P is the derivative of entropy with respect to pressure for an ideal gas. So several times during this course, these will pop up and these Maxwell relations will be used for some type of derivation to get us a physical result of something that would be difficult using the derivative that we had, but using a Maxwell relation, we get to use a much simpler derivative, allowing us to move forward with our result.